All right, so as you see, we're going to talk about midpoints. Oops, let me change this. I forgot about that. So let's start off real simple at first, and then we'll get to the stuff where you're going to have on the homework, all right? So this little part right here, it's not technically going to be on the homework, but it's good to know. Oops, let's make this flat like this. All right, let's say, here's an example that I use all the time. Let's say uh, this is a highway and you got these exits on the highway, okay? And so let's say, uh, and, you, and a lot of times, not all the times, like on a turnpike, they don't do this, but on like a 95, they do this. So whatever mile marker you're at on 95, on I-95, whatever exit kind of coincides with the closest mile marker for that. Did you, did you realize that? Okay, well, that's, that's what it does, okay? So if you're driving down 95 and um, you get off of exit five, I think Newcastle might be exit five. That's like five miles from the border. Okay, so it starts at zero, right? It goes one, two, three, four, five, and um, and so on. And all down 95, you'll see all these different um, uh, exit numbers, and usually there are exit numbers that correspond to markers. Uh, you get on the New Jersey Turnpike, Pennsylvania Turnpike, it's different. I mean, you might go 20 miles before you get to an exit, and they'll have like exit one, 20 miles later, exit two, 30 miles later, exit three, so they don't really do that. But on the interstate, they usually do that. So why am I saying that? Because let's say you are at mile marker five and um, somebody else is over here at mile marker, um, let's say seven. I just make it harder than that. Let's make it um, 23, <laughs> all right, weird. All right, so you're that far away and you guys wanna meet, all right? You know, this person doesn't want to come to this person's house. It's too far to go. How far would it be to go to get from one person's house to the other? Okay, if they lived on the exit. <laughs> okay, whatever. 18 miles, right? It would take 18 miles, right, to move. So what if, shh, up here, up here. Shh, land it, up here. So, like if I'm here, all right, this is A for Aaron, and this is, Mason, I'm coming to your house, okay? So this is M for Mason, all right? So actually, I'm not going to go to his house. It's too far to go to his house, and he doesn't want to drive to my house, all right? So we want to meet somewhere. We're going to talk about important photography business, right? And we want to meet halfway, all right? Here, this is the key, all right? So you're going to meet halfway, exactly half, all right? And uh, we're going to meet at, I don't know, Chick-fil-A. So Chick-fil-A. That's where we're going to meet, all right? And it's exactly halfway. I got to figure out what exit am I going to get off of? What mile marker am I going to be? All right, not how far I have to travel, but what mile marker, okay, will I be uh, to get to Chick Fil A? What mile marker? Not how far, but what mile marker? Nine. So it'd be nine mile mark. It'd be nine miles, but it wouldn't be the nine mile marker, right? Okay, it'd be 14 because, all right, like Ty said, the whole entire distance is how far? 18, and how did you get that? Divided? You didn't divide anything. You did what? 23 what? Minus five is what? Oops, get a pen that could write here, is 18. So the whole distance is 18. Now, if we split that in half, how far am I going to go? How far is Mason going to go? We're going to go nine. Okay, so from here to here would be nine miles. Shh. So it would be there and there. Okay, so nine miles for him, nine miles for me, but I want to find out what mile marker I'm at. So I'm starting not at zero. Where am I starting? Starting at five. And if I go nine miles from mile marker five, where am I going to be? I'm going to be at 14. Or I could... It's a lot of talking and I'm trying to talk and it seems like I'm getting louder and louder. I shouldn't. I should just be able to talk in a regular tone. So it should be a mile marker 14. Now watch. What if uh, Mason needed to go 9? Would he add 9 to his 23? Subtract. No, he would subtract it because he's going the opposite direction. Okay, So he's going this way. So what's 23 minus 9? That's 14 as well. Okay, So I could, I could do that. But there's an easier way. The math. The math is a little bit easier. I want you to take a look at five. I want you to take a look at 23. And how did I get 14 out of that? 
instead of subtracting and then a nine, then adding it to this or subtracting from that, I could do one little two-step arithmetic to get five and 23 to become a 14. Mason, what, would, what is it? That's right, if I just add them together, now just adding them together is not gonna give me 14, is it? It's gonna give me what? 28, all right? So I'm going halfway, so what do I do with that 28? Divided by two. Everybody hear me on that? So I could take to find the, whoops, there goes my pen. Stop doing that. Let's try this again. Midpoint, I'll call it MP for midpoint, all right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna add up the two endpoints. Everybody see that? So I'm gonna go five plus 23, and then what am I gonna do though after I add them together? I'm gonna divide by two, that's right. And I can do that for anything. Everybody with me on that? That's a lot easier, don't you think, than finding the whole distance, finding half of it, then adding it to the one, right? It's one less step, but this is a lot easier. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna learn a little formula to find the midpoint of something. That's a good question. That's exactly what I'm going to get to right now. All right, so um, let's do this. Let's just move this up out of the way. Now, if I was going up and down, wouldn't it be the same exact thing? All right, All right. So if I was here, right, going north and south instead of east and west, All right? If I was here at 23 and I was here at five, whoops, stop doing that. If I was here at five, halfway would be exactly the same thing, wouldn't it? Just take the two endpoints, add them up, divide by two, boom, got the midpoint, all right? So Sam asked a good question. He said, what about, what if we had coordinates? And that's exactly what we're gonna do on this homework, okay? They're gonna give you some coordinates and you gotta find the midpoint of those coordinates. All right, so if it's going left and right or east and west, it's pretty easy. Just take the two endpoints, add them up, divide by two. If it's going north and south, right, up and down, the y direction, what do you do? You take the two endpoints and Add them up, divide by two. You're not subtracting, what are you doing? Divide you're adding. You're, well, before you divide by two, you add them before you divide by two. Everybody with me? All right, so what if you have something that's going on along a diagonal like this, okay? Now, this is not a line, because can you take the midpoint, can you find the midpoint of a line? That's right, a line keeps on going forever and ever, okay? So really, there is no midpoint of a line. Would you agree? Because it keeps on going forever and ever. But a line segment, if I got a beginning and an end, I can find the midpoint of the beginning and the end. So if I had a point right here and a point right here, I'm gonna try to find where the middle of it is. Now, can I just count? Even if we had like the little grid marks, right? Graph paper, could I just count? One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. No, not diagonally, I can't, all right? Because I don't know, like, I, here, let's bring in this. I probably should have started with this, but that's okay. Um, let's, I'm not really gonna, ah, uh, come on, grab it, there it is. And let's move this right there. Okay, so let's do that again, what if, I went like this. Actually, let's let's stay within. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's stay within the graph instead of going outside there. Okay, what if I had it like this? All right. Could I count like diagonally? No, no because each of these, right, like from here to here, if you count that as one, from there to there, that's not the same as that. That's not the same as that. So you can't really count diagonally. On a graph, we can count how? Rise over run, okay. Technically, that's true, but we we use rise over run for slope. We're not really finding the slope. We're just trying to find the midpoint. But we can count horizontally, right? And we can, we can count vertically, all right? Everybody with me on that? Okay, so what we're going to do I'm going to call this point, let's just call it point one. So what are my coordinates of point one going to be? It's going to be x1 and what do you think? Y. y1. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. Okay, what about up here? What's that point going to be then? If this is point one, this is going to be point two. What do you think I'm going to call this? x2 and y2. 
You guys okay with that? Okay. Now, remember what I said. I can count left and right. I can count up and down on a graph. I just can't count diagonally. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw a line horizontally. I'm going to start from here. Where am I going to go? Am I going to go to here? Right, until it's right below that other point. Exactly right. Okay, I don't know. Does that look close? Yeah, it looks pretty close. And then um, I'll tell you what. Let's do this in a different color. Uh, I don't know. Let's go green. Don't use green very much. And I'll straighten these out. Yeah, that's pretty close. Not exactly, but we'll put a big old... Oops, that's definitely not close. I'll put a big old dot there. There we go. All right, you get the idea, right? Put a big old dot right there, okay? It covers it up. Now, this is a little tricky. What is that point going to be right there, that green dot? I'll, I'll go back to pink. Let's find out what this dot's going to be. Now, do you have to do what I'm going to do right here on your homework? You don't have to, okay? What we're doing is we're coming up with our midpoint formula, all right? I think this is good to do. Um, you guys are seniors. I think you can handle something like this. If this is Algebra 1, I don't know. It depends on the class. I don't know if I would do this or not. But what is this point going to be right here? Very good. Okay. Now watch. How did he get x2, y1 out of that? Because you started to get to this point right here. You started at the origin, and you had to go over this far. How far over did we go to get to the green? We went x2, didn't we? Because remember, i got to go over and down to figure out what that point's going to be. How far over did I go? Well, I'm right under here, and what was the x part of this point? x2. So everywhere on this green line is going to be x2. If you don't understand that, that's fine. But if you do, that's great too. All right. How far down did we go then? From here to here. Well, we went the same distance as we went from here to here, which is y1. Okay. And again, if you get it, great. If you don't, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it, okay? It's not going to be on a quiz or a test. All I'm trying to do is come up with a formula for midpoint, and then we're going to learn how to use it, all right? So now what I want to do, remember I said I could find the midpoint of a horizontal one, and I can find the midpoint of a vertical one, right? So let's do that now. Let's do the yellow one. Let's find the midpoint of just the yellow one, all right? So I'm going from here to here. So this would be um, this would be my x1, and this would be my x2, correct? So how do I find the midpoint? I don't know. The midpoint would be, I'll tell you what, I could actually find it. Yeah, see that dot right there? That's the actual midpoint, so I'll put a little dot right there. So where is that? It's halfway between here and here, okay? Well, this is an x1. This is an x2. Remember we had the 5 and the 23? It's the same kind of thing. So what is the midpoint of this? If this was 5 and this was 23, you could do it. What would you do if it was 5 and 23? What math would you do? Add You'd add them up and divide by 2. But it's not a 5 and a 23. What's the x part of this point right here? x1. And what's the x par part of this point right here? It's x2. So how do I find the midpoint then? x1, what? Plus x2 and do what? divided by 2. Very good. So that's the midpoint of the green one. Does that make sense? All right, let's do, let's find out where, let's put a dot right there. Okay, oops. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay, there's that. And then I got to click off of it. There we go. Now I can do this. All right, so there's the midpoint of the green one right there. So how do I find, let's not even put it in parentheses. How do I find the midpoint of the green one? Well, it's the up and down, right? So I've got a y what? I got a y, yeah, I got a y1 plus y2. It doesn't matter what order. Because if I go 3 plus 5, is that any different than 5 plus 3? No, it doesn't make any difference. So I'll just go y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So that's how you get that. Everybody with me? Let's go a different color. So now what I want to do is I want to find the midpoint of this uh, pink one right here. Let's find out where, th where that is. There's a dot right there. So it should be right there. So check this out. If I go from here straight up, you see, oops, keep doing that. 
There we go. Everybody see that? And then if I go here, straight across like that, bam. Works out perfect, doesn't it? So the halfway of the yellow one, halfway of the green one gives us half of the pink one. Okay, it gives me the midpoint of that pink one. Everybody see that? So I went halfway over the yellow, I went halfway up the green, and that should put me dead on the midpoint of the pink one. Make sense? So what we want to find, and here it is. This is, this is what all this stuff that I'm talking about comes to a conclusion right here. Okay, what is this point? Remember, it's a point. Okay, so it's an ordered pair, isn't it? So I'm going to write it as an ordered pair. So how far over? What, what's the X part of this point right here? It's, it's this right here. It's what? X1 plus X2 what? Divided by 2. What's the Y part of this right here? It's how far up we went here. What is that point? Y1 plus Y2. I made it kind of small, make it a little bit bigger. That right there, what we just drew right there, we just wrote down, that is your midpoint. And that's the midpoint formula. This is something you have to know, something you have to memorize. Do you have to know how we got to it? Nah, you don't have to. Is it nice to know how we got to it? Yeah, I think it's kind of nice to know. It's not like just somebody sitting in. I, I always had this vision when I was a kid, and they give you these formulas. I had just this vision of some old guy with a beard down to the floor, sitting in some dark room, just coming up with all these equations. All right, it's not how it works. Um, this actually makes sense. We know how to find the midpoint of something, right? And um, you find the midpoint of this one, midpoint of this one, boom, that's the midpoint of the pink one, the diagonal one. And that's our formula right there. That's something that you have to memorize, all right? You got to know it. You got to memorize that formula. When you do these problems on the homework, um, you got to have, have that formula memorized. I mean, I guess you could look in your notes, right, and look at it. You could write it on your homework paper. That's fine. But when you get to a quiz or a test, you're not going to have those notes with you. You've got to have it memorized, all right? So what I would do if I were you, maybe you don't want to have to do this with every single problem, but I would do this with a few of them. I would write down the formula every time you have to do one, all right? So what is the midpoint then? It's a point. So I put an ordered pair, okay? And then what's the X part of the midpoint? Well, I just take the two endpoints add them up, and divide by 2. How do you find the y part of it? Take those two endpoints and divide it by 2. It's that simple. It really is. It's really not that difficult. You may, got, you may have got lost. I put several people to sleep already. I see your heads on the desk not paying a lick of attention. But that's your prerogative, I guess, if you don't want to learn. Um, I can't force you to want to learn. But So anyway, that's the midpoint formula. I would write it down several times. Every time you do a problem, right, I would write down the formula so that you remember it. If you just sit there and say, yeah, I think I can remember that, and then you don't ever use it again until you take the quiz or a test, especially since uh, we're not going to take the quiz till after we come back from Thanksgiving break, um, you know, you're not going to have it memorized. But if you write it down every single time they give you a problem, then you're good. Does anybody have their book with them? Yeah. Okay, get, um, open up to what the homework is. It's page, uh, what, 98? 57. Give me number 58. Uh, I'm giving you all of them, aren't I? Well, now, give me 57. Let's just do 57. Uh, give me another one. I don't want zero, zero. Give me 58. 60. 10, 4. 2, negative 2. Okay. So here's what they're going to do. All right, this is number 60 on the homework. I'm just going to do one for you, and I'll let you do the rest of them, okay? So here's what you do. They give you two points. P and Q, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah I just didn't write it down. So that's point P, that's point Q. And what you need to do is find the midpoint of those two points, all right? You want to find out where the midpoint is. Now, do you have to draw a graph and plot the point here, plot the point here, and draw it, and all that kind of stuff? No, you don't have to. We already did that work. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. Anybody heard that expression? Yeah. Reinvent the wheel? All right, so every time you get in a car, you don't have to like invent all the stuff that makes the car go. You just get in there. Somebody did all the hard work for you. You just get in the car and you go, all right? 
So don't reinvent the wheel, just use the formula that we came up with. You don't have to go through it every single time, but just use it. So how do I find the midpoint? Midpoint equals, again, it's an ordered pair. I'm gonna say this a hundred times, and some people are gonna say, look at this and say, oh, midpoint is seven. Does that make any sense? No. no. It's not just gonna be a number, all right? It's gonna be a what? An ordered pair. So I need parentheses and a comma, and then I need a number here for the X and a number here for the Y. That's the way your midpoint's gonna look every single time. Everybody got it? Sam? Um, can we do a decimal? Uh, the, the, yeah, just keep it as a fraction, okay? If it comes out to a fraction, keep it as a fraction. Don't turn it into a decimal, okay? So for high school math, the fractions are perfectly fine. If you get out into the world and you're measuring things like in inches and stuff like that, you probably make it a decimal or at least make it a fraction where you can measure it, all right? But um, for right now, high school math, we're keeping them fractions if it doesn't you know, come out even, all right? So let's do the work. Some of you guys did it already. So what are my x's? I'm gonna add up, here it is. I add up the x's, look over here. Which ones are my x's? The 10 right there, that's an x, and that's an x right there. Well, okay. So those are my x's. So what do I do with those two numbers? I add them up. So I go 10 plus two over what? Over two, because we're taking half of it. We're finding the midpoint, right? What about my y's? What are my two y's? Four and what? Negative two. So I go four plus negative two. Or you could just go four minus two, and that's the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's do this. 10 plus two is 12 but we're dividing it by two. Come on, pen. All right, it's not the pen, it's me. So four plus negative two is what? Two over two, it's four plus negative two, or four minus two, right? And we're almost done. 12 over two is six, two over two is one. That's your midpoint right there, okay? I mean, if you wanted to, you could graph it, let's just, you don't have to do it, but let me just kind of show you just very quickly and I'll just sketch it. I'm not going to be super, uh, well, I don't know. Let's do that. Let's actually be, did I paste that? Yeah, good. I still got that. Let's, let's actually be pretty accurate. You don't have to do this. What I'm going to do right now with the graph, you don't have to do. All they want you to do is just find the midpoint. But just for fun, Let's put this stuff in here. 10, 4. Uh, I don't even know if I have 10, though. That's my problem. Let's see. How, ma how many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That would be about right there, right? So there's 10, and then go up 4. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, I could have done that, too. You're right. Anyway, that's 10, 4. Where's 2, negative 2? 2, negative 2. Okay? And then... This is not a line, it's a line segment, because I want to find the midpoint of that. So where is the midpoint? It's cl Now, I didn't do it, ex it's not exactly right, because I had to come off the graph a little bit. But where is it, basically? It's six, what? One. And that's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah, I just didn't, you know, it didn't all fit on the graph, so. But that's my midpoint, that's what I just found. Do you have to graph it? No, you don't. But it's kind of nice to look at it and say, oh yeah, it does, if I put it on a graph, that's absolutely the midpoint of that line segment, okay, 6, 1. But I don't have to look at it. I just use my formula, boom, get it, and that's it. You're basically just doing this for every problem. That's it. There's nothing fancy on there. Um, there it might come out to not an even number up top, right, so if you're divided by 2. So if it came out to 7 divided by 2, just leave it 7 over 2, all right? I mean, so it could come out something like this. I'm just making these numbers up off the top of my head, okay? So you could get something like that. It's perfectly fine. Don't put them into fractions. Don't give me negative one half. Don't give me three and a half. Just leave it seven over two. Everybody with me? Okay. So your assignment is 57 to 66. So you should. You've got about 12 minutes left. I bet you anything, if you really try... If you really try, you should be able to get these things done. So that's page 98. Yeah, if, you're, if your uh, book is on your phone, you have permission to get on your phone as long as you're just using it to see the book. All right? 
and it's section 21B. I think I turned 21A back to you, didn't I? This is 21B. Everybody good? Yeah. Yes, quickly. 